In rich countries, an electric vehicle tsunami is expected as car firms and governments commit to increase their numbers. There are expected to be 145 million on the road by 2030. While electric vehicles can help to reduce emissions, they also carry a potential environmental time bomb, their batteries. Welcome everyone! In today's video, we're going to look at according to Giga Nevada Battery gonna destroy the entire electric car industry. Tesla has formally unveiled its planned new battery and semi-factory in northern Nevada, as well as a $3.6 billion investment to make it a reality. But are they truly new plants, or are they merely the completion of Gigafactory Nevada to its original size? But before we proceed, if you're new to this channel, remember, go ahead and hit the bell icon to subscribe, so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. Now get ready and make sure to stay tuned till the end as we dive right into the video. Giga Nevada Battery Gone Now Destroy the Entire Electric Car Industry In a speech on January 23, Nevada Governor Joe Lombardo announced that Tesla wants to invest an additional $3.6 billion to expand its gig manufacturing, the state's first outside of Reno. The expansion will add two new manufacturing facilities to the existing Giga factory one to make the Tesla semi-electric Class 8 truck, and the other to generate 100 gigawatt-hour of 4680 battery cells annually. Tesla intends to hire 3,000 new employees between the two. The Tesla Semi has followed a pattern that has become all too familiar for the firm. Elon Musk initially revealed it in 2017 amid a frenzy of hyperventilating enthusiastic talk. Then, except the exception of a few photographs on social media showing trucks moving about the boundaries of the factory or charging at supercharger spots here and there, little was heard about it. It wasn't until last December, at a highly publicized ceremony in Nevada, that a few semis were delivered to Frito-Lay. Because construction on the new Nevada plants has not yet commenced, in other words, the vehicles will not be widely available on American roads until at least 2024. That's seven years after the initial announcement, which is precisely on time in Musk's magical universe. These other companies are not currently producing a big quantity of electric Class A trucks. When Freightliner or Volvo delivers four or five of them, it is still major news. Decarbonizing the heavy vehicle industry will take time. There is a lot of work to be done. Class A truck charging infrastructure is currently non-existent. Even though the fact that Tesla has created its so-called Mega Charger, which purportedly has up to 1,000 kilowatts of charging power, they are now only available at the Nevada or Fremont factories. Tesla could take in nearly $1.3 billion in tax incentives. Tesla has been reporting on its progress since the Giga factory first broke ground, but as building slows and manufacturing ramps up, the project's long-term destiny remains unknown. Some economists have questioned the incentives, while the state and Tesla have provided seemingly contradictory information on the company's immediate prospects. If the factory fails to live up to its promises, the question that has arisen regarding the project will most likely linger for years. Was it worth it? On one level, it's hardly surprising that Tesla would benefit from such a partnership. States have long viewed manufacturing as the ideal area to invest tax funds, considering the incentive as a down payment bait that will initially attract a business, then an industry, and finally, a new population developed around the industry. That money is frequently used by transportation businesses, despite the fact that there is no government database for tax incentives, making it difficult to track where money is spent. Vehicle manufacturers have surpassed many other industries. According to a 2012 New York Times analysis, GN received $1.7 billion in incentives over a five-year period, with Ford and Chrysler close behind. According to data from Good Jobs First, a watchdog organization that tracks significant subsidy deals, Boeing received the largest subsidy ever awarded in 2013, a deal with the state of Washington that may potentially be valued up to $8.7 billion. Future of the project still uncertain. The prospect of a windfall for a state is enticing. Suppliers are required by manufacturing. Encourage the company to come to you rather than somewhere else and perhaps an entire industry will spring up to operate near the first business. You suddenly have many more jobs than you paid for, and a reinvigorated service industry may emerge to serve a larger population. 
Those folks pay their taxes, and the benefits may outweigh the bargain offered. This concept has inspired the reasoning behind tax breaks, allowing them to grow into the behemoths they are today. The Tesla Agreement is only the most recent example. Nevada predicts that the facility will create 6,500 direct employments, but 22,700 total jobs. While higher manufacturing is beneficial to the brand, the fresh investments come after a year in which many questioned Tesla's leadership. The company's stock dropped about 70% in 2022, and despite breaking records in the fourth quarter, the corporation was still unable to fulfill its delivery objective for the year. While electric batteries are anticipated to be a net plus for the firm, they have just recently debuted after a five-year delay. It will be interesting to examine how well the new facilities meet the company's identified problems. That's all for today's video. We don't pretend to be able to anticipate how these companies will do in the future. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.